Well, this is fun. <laughs> we are out on our first date night in, shoot, it's probably been it was, it a was year. Mar no, it was March. Do you remember we went to Asheville right before That doesn't count. That's a, that's a date trip. That was true. That's so a date trip. this is our first been out. date night in... We did a double date right before lockdown. We did, you're right. Yeah, we did a double date, so. So pretty much early March. Oh, uh -oh. the baby's He's crying. Tuning up. Come here, pumpkin. You can keep talking. I will. So we thought we would take the opportunity to jump on here and give you guys an update on where we've been. This year has been insane. And just kind of walk you guys through what our 2020 has been. Um, and yeah, we're going to jump back on here and start doing more YouTube videos. We've got, I think we've got a lot that, that we can cover and, uh, a lot of new stuff. We've been doing lots of stuff at our new house that you guys have all seen. I did, I did sneak in a video before baby Ophelia came the day that baby Ophelia came. So yes. here she is. She's going to join the party. Hi. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to start at the beginning. <laughs> we, uh, earlier this year, we really felt like we were supposed to start pressing into more self-sustainability. So we did things like we bought a bread maker so that we could make our own bread. We had chickens, obviously everyone's seen our chickens. Mm -hmm. We wanted to just become, we wanted to live more sustainably and less, have less dependency on really everything. So earlier this year we did, we made, we took those steps, then the pandemic hit. Um, and those things in some respects became easier, but in a lot of respects they became harder. It was, you had back order on seeds mm -hmm. and you couldn't find starter trays, you know, crazy things yeah, that you don't think about and that you don't deal with in a normal year. And so we, did it though we still did it everyone saw our videos with the garden and mm -hmm. with the chickens and the meat birds and all of these things and that was i think that was a time of acceleration like where yeah. i think we really got a lot of energy from being home and having some focused time that we typically didn't have with um, just busy schedules and having a lot of community over at our house and right. that kind of thing where we weren't able and Jonathan's tra work travel. Um, I haven't flown any this year. So, is, well, since you could have since never February. imagined that. But um, you guys don't know that though. Some of you don't know that that I travel a lot for work. A lot, a lot, a um, lot. And so that means that any of the projects that we had tried to do, say, fall of 2019 yeah. or through 2019, we could get, you know, a few hours done at a time or, um, you know, taking time off or something right. like that to get stuff done. But, man, it was like a huge backlog of accelerated projects at right. the beginning of the pandemic. And community-wise, I felt really like like we're in this together with everybody like we were like sharing food you know when yeah. the flower shortage and all this stuff and so I still felt like a camaraderie with you know kind of connected to community and neighbors and different things like that through the right. beginning of things so we were able to step into a lot of this but ultimately I think we started to realize that two acres wasn't gonna cut what we needed what what it wasn't going to cut it with what we wanted to do with our goals in right. our lifestyle. Right. And so there were a series of events. We started looking at land. And we started looking at land. And kind of processed through like, okay, what, I mean, I just, we felt like we needed a release valve for some of our like creativity <laughs> in our projects. Um, so it was like, oh, well maybe if we got just some land, you know, yeah. kind of around the corner or whatever, that we would be able to take our goats out there yeah, and maybe let like... our goats go after it on the land. Or we, we didn't have a fully developed idea, but then, I um, thought we would have an outlet instead of like, just feeling like, I mean, being in a neighborhood and in a suburban setting, um, it's hard to have things in process when, 
Um, you have neighbors and people affected by your choices and different things like that. And so I knew that, and we didn't have a lot of storage space. And so if we were working on a project, we couldn't store it inside the garage. Right. It sat in the driveway and that just created pressure for me, you know, to have things kind of in order. And yeah. so that's when we started looking at land. And then we realized that the meat birds and there were a number of things, a number of factors, but we just realized that it wasn't going to work to do what we wanted to do on the property that we had. So we started looking for more land and a house on it so that we could just, so that we could just move. Yeah. And so we found a house with 11 acres and we did it Futrezy style and <laughs> <laughs> we went under contract and closed in three weeks yes and i because think that was the fastest we had a loan as well mm -hmm. and i had an amazing mortgage banker highly recommend him uh reach out if you if you need help in the carolinas he can totally do it and he's in ohio actually so but closed it in three weeks from the date we went under contract i've never heard of anyone closing a house that fast with a loan and it was great it was a difficult process um there well, were we just a, a lot of community she was due and i was like we can't we have to be in, in a by house the end of before June. she delivers <laughs> yeah so we moved we closed on the house moved in everything went really smoothly we had it great really support had so help. thankful for everyone who helped us mm -hmm. um and that was that was amazing and we got a little settled but not totally settled <laughs> and we did a home birth which was really fun that our was midwife so crazy. was amazing it was so good like the crazy part about it was that um neither of us were open to having a home birth. very not um, open very closed <laughs> at all and thanks to there being a pandemic where it made us more uncomfortable being in a hospital setting um we weren't planning uh you know in any kind of you know yeah, like being in a hospital setting was just not, you know, totally peaceful. Um, so that added push in that direction. And then with the house that we moved into, we actually had square feet where we could, you know, have Set a up space a birth for labor and delivery. And... So um, we both uh, looked at each other. One important thing that I did not mention is my, just prior to this sweetheart coming, um, my sister got COVID. Actually, on the day we closed on the on house. On the day we closed we on the in. house she went to the hospital with covid um had no pre-existing conditions or anything mm -hmm. she's 40 mm -hmm. and just had a really bad experience with covid she was on a ventilator for 15 days i think yeah, it was 14. um ultimately she's she's doing a lot better now still has some residual stuff mm -hmm. but she's we're thankful she's here so thankful. it was really really and we Tough. Were, she came off the vent about a week before Ophelia was born. Yeah. And so that was a huge gift to us. Yeah. I felt like, I was like, thank you, Lord, that we felt like Lauren was in a really good place um, yeah. before we transitioned to having Ophelia. And um, we loved and still love our midwife. Um, she was awesome. Awesome. Is lives awesome. on the other side <laughs> of the mountain from us. It was totally wonderful and um it made my little introverted heart happy we highly <laughs> recommend paris mountain midwifery That's if you're here right. in greenville ah, she's, she's awesome so, so um so that really made that made i think it was probably is hands down the oh, best birth experience of the sure. five um yeah. you know wish i wish i knew what i know now then you can't, then. You can't but, know everything. But that's life, right? So yeah. so we had Othelia. I'm going to try to condense our little <laughs> our spiel here. A lot's happened. We had Othelia, and um, given Lauren's experience with COVID, we just really kind of hunkered down yeah. and tried to focus on doing the things we needed to do mm -hmm. to get our, yeah. our little homestead set up. Um, had a fence built for the goats and the dogs, so they have their own space. Yeah. It's great got our chickens set up we've um mulched a bunch of different places for mm -hmm. where our chickens are going to be in hopes that we can get a garden going there next year we've 
what else have we done? We got, <clears throat> we actually got our old chicken coop from the previous oh. house moved, <laughs> and it's now kind of a shed for us slash a finishing building mm -hmm. <laughs> for our chickens. Esther's been working on getting our old nesting boxes to be finishing crates for the breast birds. Mm -hmm. Not done yet. Um, this next batch yes, probably yes. isn't gonna make it into the finishing crates for the, for the full time, but we're getting there. It's getting it's there. it's about the process, yeah. right? Yeah. Then fast forward to around Thanksgiving, the week week before, probably we had exposure to COVID, and ended up catching COVID. We did Thanksgiving by ourselves with our unit of seven <laughs> we can still yeah, we can crush crowd. a full thanksgiving meal with with our family yeah. so it's fun um but the saturday after thanksgiving esther tested positive for covid mm -hmm. we all seven got it mm -hmm. it was not fun not, not, not an easy <laughs> not an easy experience i think we the two of us ex had the the worst of the virus and yeah, and had the, the most challenges are... um okay my lungs tend to hold on to stuff, and so it, it really liked COVID and, and held on a little bit longer than I would have liked. I still have a little bit of a cough. Mm -hmm. um, it's our scarlet letter for mm -hmm. <laughs> having caught COVID. And then, um, and then the week after we got COVID, I had a really bad nosebleed and had to go to the emergency mm -hmm. room. Blood, blood pressure dropped, and... That was a traumatic experience for us. It was. I, it that was, was very scary. <laughs> poor Esther. It's more traumatic for Esther than it was for me. I was just like, all right, Jesus, if you need to take me, go on. <laughs> go on with it. Um, but that was not very fun. My blood pressure dropped to like 70 over 44. Um, crazy, crazy Big. stuff. We got it stopped. I'm, I'm starting to feel better. Mm -hmm. Starting to feel better from COVID. But... Um, and then yesterday I went to go pick up a, a dog house that I had built for Rayma and Hector. And on the way back, my truck stopped working. Yeah. The power brakes and power steering went on a, a fairly large mm -hmm. road. Speed limit was 50 miles per hour. Um, and I almost made it to the neighborhood, but I didn't quite make it to the neighborhood I needed oh, to man. get to. Luckily, though, I had a recovery strap that I didn't know I had. I thought we broke it at the old house. Oh, nice. I thought we broke both of my recovery mm -hmm. straps, and I had never replaced it, and I was immediately regretting it. Um, but I found one in the back of my truck, oh, that's awesome. and a guy, a super nice guy, stopped. We tried his little, like, I mean, plastic rope, and it immediately broke. I had a, I have a big F two fifty, so mm -hmm. you know, seven thousand pounds there, and then I had a big trailer that I was pulling with a big with a big pressure treated yeah. uh, dog house on it. Mm -hmm. And so we got the recovery strap out and he was able to pull me into a neighborhood so I could get off of the road. That was really scary, people mm -hmm. not seeing me mm -hmm. on the road. And then we got it towed. Um, our neighbor, awesome, we have the best neighbors. Really neighbors. Um, neighbor came and helped me tow the trailer back and then he actually had AAA. And so we were able to get the towing for the truck for free which was amazing. Uh, I signed up for AAA this morning, <laughs> yeah, both of us. <laughs> I was like, I'm not having yeah, this happen again. again. Um, so you forgot some other fun things. What else like I, uh, I, this is all the trauma. I, you can tell I have like PTSD <laughs> from 2020. <laughs> it's been a lot. Well, when um, we went to take you to the hospital with your nosebleed running out the door with all kinds of stuff going on, getting everyone loaded up, the van battery was dead. Oh, yes. And so um, oh. had to change, change cars real quick. And then our sweet neighbor, um, uh, what Parker. do you call it? Um, jumped. Jumped. Jumped to the van jumped for Esther to come get me. So that I could pick up John and then the hospital later that night. And then you, don't, you didn't forget that when. Um, I didn't forget two anything. Days, I was just trying. Two days into COVID, <laughs> our heat. Oh, <laughs> this is the worst. Um, we had no heat at the house, and we quickly discovered. I mean, it's a new. I hope house I'm able to us. piece this back together so that it's not so disjointed. I I'm did sure forget a lot. I'm out. so sorry. Well, but... it's good. It's good for you. It's healthy for you to forget. A lot. Some some of it needs to be <laughs> forgotten. Some of it needs to be forgotten. We woke up on the forgotten. second day of COVID, and, and no I heat. could like see my breath in our bedroom. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, am I? Is my fever that bad? Like, 
<laughs> no, my fever wasn't bad. It was just legitimately like 50 Freezing. degrees in our room. So and... we found out that uh, one of our um, systems is on gas and our gas Propane. tank had run Not, out. Yeah. Whatever. whatever Not is. natural gas. but um, <clears throat> It needed refilled. And so um, thankfully Jonathan but... had presence of mind enough to get it. We tried to go with the big company that we that our house had been with, and they wouldn't show up. I don't even know and what so, happened. And so, shout out to Marietta. Oh man, I can't. Foothills. Foothills. Hmm, propane, maybe. Foothills something. They showed up the same day. They weren't even. So... They couldn't even commit. And I, t I just, ex I was oh, honest so with her. I was like, hey, I was like, if you <laughs> can do struggling. anything, like I got five kids. One of them is a baby and we all have COVID and it's freezing in here. Yeah. Can one of you, can someone please deliver? And she's like, I can't, we'll get it tomorrow morning. And then uh. at two o'clock she called, she's like, I got a driver on the way to you. We're going to get you warm. And I was like, this is awesome. Thank you. So we got propane uh. delivered the same day, learned that, I don't know how we didn't it pick up on that just longer story lesson probably. You, lesson but you learn in your first year. Yes. Else, so sure. anyway. Um, yeah. and so now we're, we're post COVID post crazy nosebleed and we've had we're, a baby this year. We got another dog. We got two, goats, three goats. Yeah. And you know, the chickens are still the math. Goes chickens up are doing the, really well the math though. Goes up They're doing really that. well. We'll show you them later this week. I'm sure. Um, so yeah. And I mean, I think that we have invested a lot of time and energy in, Connecting with our people the best that we know how um, and you know some of that's been sharing some hard stuff that yeah. people have gone through this year and some of that's been silly Facebook posts yeah. and some of that's been um, FaceTimes or um, just whatever and so um, it's been so strange just it's been so strange but um, we've got the antibodies now and so we yeah, get some normalcy so, like tonight we get a date night so, so we're gonna be able so to we're gonna go great. on that date night we're right now go out on the date night um we have not gone out at I all i have not gone out anywhere so <laughs> we haven't gone gonna, out at all we're gonna go out safely um and um yeah and reflect some more on the year and this the, crazy year and the good things too that um there's been so much good i don't want i didn't want this to sound negative at all i mean yeah. <clears throat> we've had so much blessing this year but yes. it's been a year of parody for sure like yeah. where you get to see <laughs> like, yeah and it's also been like and... <laughs> i feel like it's been really interesting because it's been such a refining year yeah. like you find out what stays and what goes and when you get the squeeze like when you're under pressure um and i think it's been good to see like oh that stayed or oh yeah. like i guess i didn't need that because it's not here right. anymore you know right. or whatever um it's been a, it's been a good and really hard year so yes. with so, that we're gonna sign off we right. are gonna make more videos though and we're gonna yeah, keep gonna focusing on this it's super helpful for us to be able to process <laughs> and share with you guys so yeah. thanks so much for watching our videos and tuning yeah. in and and all your support.